I've turned the uh, monitor of my video camera away. It glows and I don't need it. You can't see me. And there's no reason for me to see what the camera can see. Because it's all blind anyway. It's been a long time since we've gone on a hike together in the mountains of Japan. It's <laughs> curious that our return happens to be night. No lantern, no candles, no walking stick, no backpack, no scarf, just a shirt on my back, my understanding wife. After all these years, she knows my idiosyncrasy so well that when I have the urge to be in the mountains, she, she knows. So I said, the bath has started. You guys have a nice evening. I'm going to be wandering. Oh, in the place. Oh, you can't see it. You can't know it. Except through my voice. A flight of ducks. Can you hear the water? There's a stream beside me. I can see what's around me by the pale moonlight. Unfortunately, this camera can't pick it up. Or maybe fortunately. For then, I can share it to you. Share it with you through my expressions and my descriptions. I just startled a flight of ducks, and though I feel sorry for the ducks, well, I tripped. <laughs> be careful, there's a cliff beside me. I can see it, but I have to be careful. Oh, goodness gracious. Moon shining through a bamboo grove. My gosh. And the flight of ducks that flew up, and I feel sorry for the ducks. Sorry to scare you guys. But what a, what a delight to the stent senses, that sudden anticipation of Oh, whoa, whoa, what was that? And then the realization that it's just ducks. Only ducks. <laughs> and now a waterfall. You can probably hear the waterfall. It's pretty distinct. It seems like it's been a long time since I've taken you on a hike. Or, the way to put it is that it's been a long time that, since you've chosen to join me on a hike. And it's well, actually really it's the combination of the two. Because in order for us to do this, I have to turn the camera and turn it on and be on a hike and you have to choose to click on the link to see the video but here we are I feel odd I don't quite feel like softy papa anymore and I don't mean to I don't want to spend any time in this video on uh, ramblings about identity although I do feel like my identity is as on YouTube has become uh, split in some ways in recent months. But that's another thing. That's not a bad thing at all. Oh my gosh, you can't see it, but there is now a, a rice paddy. Uh, actually, a series of one, two, three, four rice paddies. And all of the rice has been cut back in September. It's December now. And the rice powder is wet. And the little stalks are, like, are poking out where the rice was and it's like dimples on the surface and the moonlight is shining on the water the vague water a little bit of water in the valley very curious well i was walking earlier i i've been walking for a while i didn't actually intend to turn the camera on i was just coming out for a little respite a little a little peace in the hills the city's fun, but this is where I belong. And as I was walking, I was thinking of Thoreau. You, most of you probably know Thoreau. Good old Henry David. The wanderer of the woods. The resident of Walden. He wrote a story, a book really. A description of the incidents in his life and during his two years on Walden Pond. And his cabin that he built was a mile from Concord along the railroad tracks. There was a trail as well from the railroad tracks. And uh, he would describe how sometimes he would linger late into the evening, maybe at Ralph Waldo Emerson's house or his family's house in town, and have to return in the dead of winter to his cabin by the woods, a lonely, although he probably would never call it lonely, 
an isolated cabin. That's a better word. Although his contemporaries, the people that his community members were, might have called it lonely indeed. Maybe a little bit crazy. But he would describe walking back from Concord in the, in the dead of winter. And a very dark night. Much darker than tonight. I can actually see. But he couldn't see. Sometimes there's snow or rain. And how he, he knew the path so well that even if he couldn't see, he could still find his way back. He describes the sounds and the sensation of walking. He never once described fear. Although, I'm sure he must have felt it at times. Maybe at least at first. I feel it sometimes out here. There's a dark woods to the left of me right now. And though I, I know there's nothing in there, or at least I think there's nothing in there, it, it gives me a little bit of a chill sometimes if I, if I walk through that woods. I'm looking at the entrance to the woods now. And hey, what the heck, let's go. <laughs> hey, why not go if we're together, right? But anyway, Thoreau would describe his walks back along the, uh, the railroad tracks or through the trail, through the woods. Now we're leaving the, we're leaving the river. You, can, you can't hear it so much anymore. And he would describe what it felt like to, uh, to experience the night like that. And he had such a, a, a refined, is that the right word? A refined sense for nature and for the surroundings around him. And his descriptions were so eloquent. And his wording was so perfect. And I wonder sometimes that what it must have been like for him on those walks. And perhaps now if I'm capturing a bit of it in my own walk through the night. It's quiet now. I've left the river. I'm amidst the woods now. The darkness is enveloping. And now, my friends, it's time for me to turn the camera off an adventure. I actually meant to say venture, but the word that came out was adventure, and that's the right word. It's time for me now to adventure alone into the woods, because sometimes, just sometimes in life, you must go alone. <laughs>